Awesome. And so one of the things that you mentioned in your own practice and then when you're talking about the placebo and I know in your book, your, first, your other book with Hay House, um, that meditation is a big part of it. Mm -hmm. And is, it that, is there a guided meditations that you teach that may activate it? Can people just sit sure. in silence? What, sure. What's the secret here? <laughs> well, that's a great question again because um, to change to truly change is to be greater than your environment, to be greater than your body, and to be greater than time. That's my model of change. So then, to be greater than your environment means that you're no longer allowing the conditions in your external world to dictate how you're feeling. So the doctor says to you, you have um, type 2 diabetes, you're going to live with the rest of your life. Or you have this condition, and this is condition, this is how it works for most people. Now, if you accept, believe, and surrender to your doctor's advice without analysis, you begin to take that thought and begin to implant it into your autonomic nervous system, into the operating system. And now people have just been given the voodoo curse. Now they are on a projected timeline because now the doctor, the modern day witch doctor, wears a lab coat and a stethoscope and is giving you a very specific uh, uh, sentence about your future. So that's programmed subconsciously. So if to change is to be greater than your environment, to be greater than the habits and addictions in your body, emotional addictions and unconscious habits, and to be greater than the predictable line of time where people wake up every morning and they get out of bed and they shut the alarm clock off with the same finger and they drink coffee out of the same mug and they drive to work the same way, they do the same things every day, they see the same people at the same exact place at the exact same time, their future is exactly like their past. As a matter of fact, if we took their past, we could lay it right on top the next day in their future, and that's karma. Right. They're living the same lifetime over and over. So. And I guess that's where the idea of breaking the habit of being yourself, exactly. <laughs> which is a great title. Well, that's exactly. hard to do. But. It's, it is, it is actually hard to do, but you can't do it with your conscious mind. That's right. my point. So if the change is to be greater than your t uh, body, your environment, and time, then meditation is the perfect tool. Why? Because when you close your eyes, you're eliminating the environment. If you play soft music in the background, that's less sensory input. Now your senses plug you into the environment. So if you're closing your eyes and you're putting earplugs in or playing music in the background, you're disconnecting from your known familiar environment. If you put your body away and you sit it still, you are now no longer your body. And if you can begin to focus on your inner world and change your brainwave patterns, the research shows that you will forget about time. The circuits in your brain that you use to process time will shut off, which means there is no time in that moment. And when you begin to become nobody, no one, no thing, nowhere, in no time, you become pure consciousness. That's the moment you have dominion over something in your environment. That is the moment you can change something in your body. And that's the moment you literally can create some future time. So we use meditation as the model and we use guided meditations because people can get beyond themselves and make their inner world more real than their outer world. And so the meditations we use for You Are the Placebo are about changing beliefs and perceptions about yourself and your life. And what is a belief? A thought you keep thinking over and over again until you hardwire it in your brain. And if beliefs are based on past experiences, and past experiences create emotions, the very boundaries of our beliefs are our emotions. Now, how you think and how you feel creates a state of being. And a belief, then, is just an extended state of being. And if you keep thinking and feeling the same way over time, you condition your body to be the mind of that belief. So now the body is a subconsciously programmed belief, which means most beliefs are unconscious. So when you begin to become conscious of your beliefs about money, about health, about food, about relationships, about God, about spirituality, you have to look to examine to see if they're true. So then in order for you to change a belief or perception about yourself and your life, you have to make a decision with such firm intention that the amplitude of that decision carries a level of energy that's greater than the hardwired programs in your brain and the emotional addictions in your body and your body has to respond to a new mind. So then you make a choice, and that choice becomes an experience that you never forget, and the hair on the back of your neck stands up. Your body is responding to a new mind. 
So the person who moves into a state of religious ecstasy and drinks strychnine and has no biological effects is greater than their body, their environment, and time. They don't say, geez, I'm going to drink some strychnine. I wonder if it's going to poison me. Now, belief is black and white. If you're believing in something, then you are altering your state of being. And so we teach people how to change their state of being in these guided meditations because we want them to begin to signal new genes and new ways by thought alone. But you can't do it being your normal self. It requires a level of energy that is the epiphenomenon of matter. And when you change your energy, you change your life. So we use the meditation to eliminate the body, the environment, and time to produce some effects in the body, the environment, and to create some future time. And, and we've been using some of these meditations now for years and we've seen some pretty amazing changes in people's lives.